there's, you know, you've probably heard me say it before, but, you know, there's a quote, you know, used often with, with kids and parents and, and coaches by a, a, a philosopher named John Locke, which is, you know, it only ends once everything else is just progress. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that's why it's so important to look at a, you know, an athlete's development over an extended period of time, because, you know, out of all the swim meets that they'll go to, only one is ever going to be their last one. Sure. Um, so, you know, that's just more opportunity to learn and, and take it on to the, to the next one. So, you know, but they were lucky in this instance, I think going into trials and obviously they're, they're 17, 18 year old girls. They'd never been at the, the, the trials five years ago. So this was their first experience um, of a meet like this. So was, they were lucky that they had that first day. And that's why we made, you know, um, Aaron do that time trial on that first day. And then on the second day, Aaron had her 400 IM and um, she was just better for having done that first swim. Yeah. Um, and, um, and we, you know, obviously she has a plan, you know, you know, technically and tactically how to go about the race. And she actually did just a superb job of sticking to her own plan. We always try to tell them on that, you know, especially that first 50 of butterfly, you know, just, just swim it smooth. Yeah. You know, stay off your legs. Don't get caught up in the, the, the craziness that goes on, um, and going out and she did a great job. She was, she was last in the heat. Um, to the to the first fifty, uh, I think she was like second last at the hundred, and then she just built into it from there, and she ended up winning, winning the last heat and, and kind of qualifying. Then you know, comfortably, I think she was she was fourth qualifying back going into that 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 that, um, that night swim. So she was, I think, really happy with herself about how she executed the race, and then really happy probably that it worked for her as well. <laughs> sure. Um, that that she was able to let them go a little bit on the butterfly, and um, and still have the ability to 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 build back up on the backstroke and then really attack into the breaststroke and the freestyle. Yeah. Um, so that gave her a great amount of of self confidence in, in herself, um, and just some self affirmation as well. So she she was really happy coming out of that, and then really excited to get to come back at night, mm -hmm. because um, I think everybody at the wave one meet probably had an ambition to try and get a second swim because yeah. it wasn't the biggest meet. So yeah. every, every, and everyone's so bunched together. Sure. Um, like that hundred back Annie swam on the first day, it was like, you know, one Oh one nine to one Oh two six, 40 people. That was the day. And that's the time yeah. they swam to qualify. And obviously it's, it's opened itself up actually when people swum up, but everyone sure. had a shot. Um, so that, that was great for, for Aaron. And then we made Annie time trial on the second day. So she wasn't feeling so good after a hundred backstroke. And again, I knew I see her every day and what she does in practice. And, you know, I have absolute confidence in the kids and what they're capable of doing. Yeah. Um, and she probably just needed to see that for herself a bit. Um, sure. So she actually time trialed a hundred freestyle then after Aaron's 400 IM and she swam great. Um, night and day from the day before and um, uh, again and how she put it together but and then also the time was better which made her feel good about herself as well and just again some self-affirmation that hey i'm i'm not awful no well of course you know, and it doesn't matter how many times right. we as coaches say that or their parents or their friends they have to get to that place themselves yeah um so and that just helps set her up then for her her 200 backstroke on the on the third day to meet. And um, again, she had a really good swim in the morning and put it together really well. Again, kind of didn't get over excited going out, finished really, really well. Um, and, you know, that last 50, you know, just got her in, in eighth place and, and she got back for that, that A final on, on the third night of the meet, which was, which was great. Um, and I think, you know, She handled the experience then of the, the walking out, the, the camera in your face a bit, really, really well. Yeah. Um, because if you're in, she was in lane eight going into the final. If you're in lane eight, that's the TV side. Yeah. So you're, you're going to get some, you know, there's going to be more people around you that side of it, um, of the pool and that from the non-swimming people and that. And she did a great job of just staying in her lane and 
and staying focused and, and standing up and did a real good job at my time again. Yeah. Well, it's, I, I think it was, uh, it was really exciting to, to follow back from home here and just uh, have a couple people at the meet that were um, there and really like made their presence known at the meet. Um, I think that's, uh, it's cool. I mean, I, uh, having, having been there as a spectator basically, or sorry, media in 2008, and then, um, as a college coach in, in 2012, certainly haven't had that experience of, of somebody actually swimming, um, at night. Um, all that said though, we agree. Let's just hope we have one Olympic trials meet in, uh, three years. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I think uh, all all those positive things I've I've been saying um, are all said in the sense that they did a great job in the circumstances yeah. that you know we find ourselves in. Um, by no means, I think should this be a blueprint for the for the way forward. And um, because if this was done as as I had a choice, um, I'd have some very different. Um, thoughts and opinions on it. Yeah. Um, I think they, they they made it. They made wave one exactly like wave two, as I said, as we said, with the, the setup and, and all that. And that was really important to give those kids the experience. They got the added value then because they weren't in in wave two. They got the added value of that opportunity for a second swim, and for a whole bunch of people at the meet had the experience of that second swim. And I think that's a kudos to the organizers for, for giving some meaning and purpose and some ex, giving something extra back to the kids that missed out on being at wave two. But there's no doubt I feel it as a, as a, as a swim fan, as a professional swim coach. And for someone who cares deeply about the experience that the athletes have, I am sad that I am not still in Omaha. Yeah. Um, and I would, I, I would love the kids to have had that experience um to be around to see what the sport of swimming can be right um and i think you know, when we talk about performance um even in terms of you know warming up we always talk about you you know you try to warm up at the level above you're trying to perform at and uh, you know i think bill sweetenham had a uh, when he was in charge of british swimming used to try to bring the kids he had a competition philosophy was you compete three times at your level of performance twice above it and once below yeah. Um, so there's great value of, of, of going to that next level up of performance, even if you're not going to get that second swim. Right. Um, even if you're not going to get that best time. Um, so I would hope that in three years time, they, they go back to the, the one Olympic trial. And because the other side of it, practically, and this is one of the talking points at the meet, it's a huge strain on programs financially. Sure. Um, they did two waves. Um, so there's the financial, and then there's also the personal side of it from a professional point of view, that there are guys coming and going, and, and there are some people that are just away for an extended period of time, and that presents its own sets of challenges as well. Right. And so... Um, yeah, I can't imagine uh, having to explain to my wife if I had to go to two waves of Olympic trials. It would have been... Um, it would have it would have topped the hey honey can I spend twelve days in Azerbaijan conversation from 2015 in terms of her going you want to do what so um, would have set a new personal record for me if I'd had to yeah. explain something like that yeah so there was a lot of coming and going at wave one 